Hello, I'm Mark Tallman with KASB, and I'm joined today by Ted Carter, Chief Data Officer. Uh, relatively new title when Ted joined us. He was our research specialist, mm -hmm. a position we've had a long time because research is something KASB has done for many, many years, literally decades. Ted has broadened his responsibilities, but he's still responsible for our annual data survey collection. Right. That means that every year we ask you, our members, to send us a lot of information. and we it, It's a challenge. We appreciate your cooperation. Our data is only as good as the information you sent us. And this year we've done something new. Ted has put together a single report summarizing all of the annual surveys that are sent in. You'll still have the ability to get detailed information on each right. one of those. So right. we're going to talk about those surveys and some of the highlights of what we found so far. So Ted, why don't you talk, kind of start by just what is our data process, what do we collect, and then we'll go into how we use okay. it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, as you said, we uh, collect, uh, there's about ten and a half, and I'll explain the half here in a minute, <laughs> surveys that we collect every year, uh, and they uh, are a wide range. Uh, we collect on uh, calendar information, mm -hmm. uh, fees, uh, superintendents, principals, uh, central office staff, right. uh, supplemental pay, employee relations, uh, teacher contracts, retirement, uh, other staff, and then our Half a survey is uh, teacher salary schedules. We gather uh, the actual teacher salary schedules from districts every year and then summarize that data. And as you said, we've been doing it for 35 years well, now, I, I believe. I guess, yeah. yes. So in the past, uh, we would send out paper surveys and have people fill them out and send them in at certain times of the year. Uh, a few years ago, we switched to electronic surveys, and we've kind of changed our, our philosophy on it a little bit. Uh, instead of having a, a single-shot survey, it's more of an ongoing process. So as districts get data in, they can submit to us. If they have changes later, they can come back and update that data. So that makes our, our data collection unique and a little different than something like that the state would do right. or that national uh, organizations might do because we, we look at it more like living data. You know, mm -hmm. it's data that gets updated as we go along. So because of that, uh, we've gotten away from those static reports. Yeah. Uh, and we don't spend as much time doing the big full uh, static annual reports for each survey. Uh, but we decided we still wanted something out there that was kind of a snapshot, almost a, a sense of Kansas Public Schools as a whole for the year. And so that's what this report here represents. So in other words, if you contact Ted for questions, because of course the advantage of all this is we'll see is it it allows you to look at your district's issues in the context of the whole state or customized by whatever comparison you want to make. Exactly. So if you want to know schools your size or schools in your league or schools in your region, we can get that for you. The key thing to understand is if you make a request now, we probably have some data, but incomplete, perhaps for current year. Right. We'll usually have pretty complete data for prior years, again, with the cooperation of our members as people bring that in. Exactly, exactly. Yes, we don't get 100% response every year on every survey, but we usually get at least 80%, if not more, depending on the survey. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely not every single district every single year, but we get very close. So what we want to do is not go into, a, this is very detailed, it's a wealth of information, and, and quite frankly, it is probably not something you will grab, print out, <laughs> and just sit down and read, nope. but it's something we really want to have a single document that will be able on our website, right. released in other ways. You may be watching this because you've noted that we've released it on our various publications, but it we want you to have one place you can kind of see the top line results of everything we collected. Right. So what we want to do here, just kind of briefly note some of the things that you can find as you work through this report. And I thought okay. what I'd do is just maybe uh, st some of the things that struck me, if there are some things that you want to comment on, or we, c we can move quickly, but we want people to know what's in there. And, uh, the first thing we start with is calendar information. Right. Right. And I think the thing there, of course, is very striking. One of the uh, obligations of every local board is to set your calendar every year. What this is lets you see what's common practice around the state, right. correct? Right. And that includes, uh, you know, first day of school, what the actual date is, uh, how many teacher and service days there are, uh, schedule considerations, when does school usually start for teachers, when does it usually start for students, and that's at the elementary, middle, and high school level. So there's quite a bit of uh, pretty detailed information in As there. well as what is the starting times at different levels, right. uh, policies, how average number of periods at high school, right. and right. then things like, well, what are other common holidays off? I mm -hmm. was struck by the fact that 99.2% of schools 
school districts give the Wednesday before Thanksgiving off, and you hopefully note that 0.8 percent, I'm guessing that may be one, uh, I don't know, uh, one or two only, it was uh, pretty, yeah. uh, have a half day mm -hmm. on that day. So, right. so that's calendar information. Right. Second thing we talk about is uh, teacher information is the title there. And primarily this involves around things like you know frankly when when you're when you're subtracting teachers is part of it anyway so the right. data talks about how many positions were eliminated in your district if any mm -hmm. if you went through any sort of due process hearing because although the right. state due process law was eliminated number of districts as the data shows still have maintained a due process system through negotiation. So exactly. we're able to collect that information as well as you have a snapshot here of years of experience, education levels of teachers as reported, and also leave information. Correct. Any highlights there you want to Correct. comment on? Well, I will just say uh, one of the things that's unique about this report in general is that we've combined the information from all the surveys. So, uh, you know, you mentioned teacher info. This is pulling from three or four different surveys, right. trying to pull it all into one place. Uh, highlights in here, uh, again, I think it's important to point out that this, the, the data you're seeing in this report is not necessarily every single district. Sure. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I often remind people that these are indicators, not facts. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this gives you an indication of what's going on, but it's not necessarily a hard and fast number. Uh, so the, uh, the, the main thing I would just say, looking at a lot of our uh, teacher uh, employee relations kind of data, is that the number of uh, situations throughout the state where teachers are terminated before their contact, contracts end, uh, that hearings are required are very low. Uh, S very single low digits out of tens of thousands of exactly, teachers. So exactly. it, it, it doesn't happen very often. Uh, uh, tribute to, to teachers, uh, tribute to the, the shortage of teachers, uh, maybe a lot of factors. But, right. but in fact, what we have consistently said is that since the legislature repealed the, the state due process law, the number of teacher dismissals and those sorts of things has, has really not changed very much. Right, right. And it's important to remember that, particularly given as much time as, as uh, and attention as that topic gets, it's important to remember that it really does impact a very small number of, of teachers typically right. every year. Okay. A few other things on teachers that you may find interesting leafing through this is we have information on the average teacher contract day, average teacher salary, average board paid fringe benefits. So those are the kind of things, again, in your negotiation process. Right. This is a great way to compare what your package of benefits, requirements, et cetera, are for teachers in your master contract, how that compares to the rest of the state. And again, we can break that down any way you're looking for it. Right. And something else to point out is this report, as it says in the front, is about the 18-19 school year. Uh, but the data we have avail available goes all the way back to 95, 96 in some right. cases. So we have a lot of longitudinal data. So you can really not just look at how things are right now, but how they've changed compared to previous years. Okay, another bit of information that would not be a part perhaps of your teacher negotiations, but certainly part of your considerations, funding considerations with your staff, is supplemental pay information. Exactly. And what can we say other than there's a lot of positions that districts have supplemental pay for? So if you want to know what the average football coach salary is, or debate coach, or uh, right. a pep club sponsor, or students against drunk driving, um, we have that information. Right, and we uh, pre present both the, the average dollar amounts for those supplemental contracts at several levels, you know, whether they're a district head or head in the high school level, or an assistant at the high school level, and so on, but we also provide the counts. So you can get an idea of how much uh, of those positions, how much the, the average person would make as a supplemental contract, but also how many of them are reported in the state. So districts might be looking and saying, well, how many districts really have a uh, district head for uh, activities, right. you know, that kind of thing, and, and if you're considering creating new supplemental contracts. So it's right. not always just about the money, it's also right. about you know, the do, positions Do the positions themselves. even exist? Yeah. Exactly. And again, that's why we want to stress uh, the value of this for many of our districts is probably less the statewide number, and as you say, that main, that is, again, just going to be an indicator, but that you can customize people you're interested in. And it comes back to stressing the importance. We have to make the plea again, please turn in your data, uh, right. because that's the only way we have more complete information for exactly. people to look at. Exactly. Other staff information uh, is really just, and again, this is unique to KSB. This is not something collected by the State Department of Education. If you want information on board clerks and treasurers, if you want information on what you pay a head custodian, that's the kind of information that is in this area. Right, right. We include things like nurses, uh, bus drivers, 
And that includes everything from annual salary to the average number of hours worked per okay. year, uh, contract months, okay. uh, what uh, some other interesting things in here, vacation days, benefits paid. Uh, so quite a bit of different information in there. Okay. We also have a lot of information on various school board policies. I will say this, never enough compared to the questions <laughs> that we get. Uh, right. uh, weekly, we, we probably get calls from from legislators or the media saying, well, we're interested in cell phone use. Uh, you know, what do you know about what districts are doing? Well, we, we, we don't know what we don't ask you. But again, this is information that we have been asking for many years in cases. Uh, we're not going to go into detail, but there's just a, th this is everything from do you charge participation fees to what kind of parent-teacher conferences do you have to early early retirement programs right. and driver's education. Right. or even the uh, amount you pay for hourly work for lunchroom duty. I right. mean, just very, very granular things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And then we also look at information. Again, we're the only source of a lot of information on school board elections. So we track right. every year number of candidates running, number who who seek re-election, number right. who win re-election, and then something that I think many people may not know as local board members, because you only know your own board, there are, a, there are several different ways you can be organized for elections. Mm -hmm. The most common right. method is that all board members run at large. So maybe most of you think that's the only way it's done. That would be most common. But right. boards can also have various kinds of sub-districts and different voting plans that determines who votes in what district. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. again, we break that down um, uh, through statewide. We can tailor it to your specific information. Absolutely. And then we have a number of pages in this that talk about fees, not in terms of whether you have them as much as what are they and at what levels. Again, this is several pages long. Everything from do you charge a general activity fee and what it is, band instruments, drivers, and facility usage. Right. Not just student fees, but so if you want to know how other districts handle, if we rent out a building, if we charge time, what's available. Uh, again, just a, a wealth of information. And I don't know whether anything jumps out at you because there's just a lot collected. No, with the fees, yeah, there's just so much in there uh, that, yeah, I don't know that there's anything uh, major. What we do try to do is we ask districts to give us, uh, for each kind of fee, whether they provide it, and if they provide it, whether they provide a charge. So you can also look to see uh, things like, uh, do you provide laundry for team athletics? And if so, do you charge a fee for it? And if so, how much is the fee? Uh, something else I would mention is one of, one of the other big uses of this data is not just to look at it on, on the page or on an Excel spreadsheet or one of our interactive workbooks, but to look and see what districts out there are, you know, for example, if you're thinking about a particular fee and you see that there are five districts that charge that fee, you can also then know who to reach out to. Right. And so call some of these districts and talk to them and say, hey, what, you know, what was your rationale behind this and why are you charging that much? And so we encourage this to be not just a tool to look at the data, but a tool to reach out to some other districts and really have some conversations about what their policies are, why those policies are there, and, and get a better feel for, uh, you know, for some consistency there. Okay, so to kind of wrap up, what I'm sure people are now interested in is how do I find this information? Right. Where is it? Right. You may they know, depending on how you access this video, but talk a little bit again about if people are interested, where can they find this or how can they contact you? Okay, great. The, the report itself that we're talking about, which is how many pages? 16 pages. So uh, uh, definitely something to keep by your nightstand if you're having trouble sleeping. Yes. Uh, but you can find this on ksb.org uh, under the research section. Uh, if you look at reports and publications, uh, and if you click on that, you will see at the very top that KSB 2018-19 survey annual report link. Uh, so that's probably the easiest way, way to get to it. Perfect. And there's, a, there's a good little shot of it. Uh, for those of you who have logins to our member portal, you can also find it in the member portal under the uh, member resources menu and then district level data. Uh, and then uh, that's a little bit, lot, you know, that's a lot to try to remember. Uh, but yeah, here's a, uh, what the portal looks like. So hopefully you have or can access a username and that right. that gets you because, and this is, a, this is a change in recent years, this specific information is no longer available to anyone. We've brought that in. As, this uh, report, no, the report is, that's but right. you're right, but the district yeah. level data, right. we have brought that all under. It used to be that we had some of those that were available just to the public and then some that was just available to members. Uh, and we've all kind of put it all behind the member uh, resources area. But there are occasions where we, for example, uh, research projects. If sure. there are research projects, we frequently will we'll share this data. 
Uh, so the most important thing to know is uh, my email address is tcarter at ksde.org, uh, excuse me, kasb.org. Um, and if you have any trouble finding this, if you have questions about the data, if you uh, just want to you know, chat a little bit about how we got there, uh, if you want to check and see if you've submitted this data, which is always good, uh, feel free to email me and, uh, and I can certainly help out with a lot of that. Okay. Well, thank you for viewing. Again, this is a service to, to you, our members. I want to thank Ted for his work behind it. We want to thank you for submitting the information. Uh, but as always, if there are, uh, you know, uh, you, we can't explain how much information we have that we're trying to share. So a lot. If, yeah, that's right. If, <laughs> we you, have if, a you, lot. if you think of a question, we, there's a good chance we'll be able to answer it. Um, and if not, we'll always do our best to direct you where you can find it. Unfortunately, I have to end by one thing, though. No one can, get, one thing we hear from members all the time oh, we have to fill out so many surveys and it takes so much time. That's true, but remember, if someone doesn't fill them out, sent them in, and someone compile it, then that information you're asking for is not going to be available. So that's why, again, we know it's work, we appreciate it, but the product is something that we hope is useful to our members. So Absolutely. thank you very much, Absolutely. and if you have any questions, please contact us, starting with Ted.